So hi, hello and welcome again, Microbe Hunter here. Worms, worms, worms. I'm gonna put some worms under the microscope today, but don't worry, um, they look pretty cute. Uh, and I'll be feeding them uh, not only potatoes, but also yeast. I think it's quite nice to see how the food that they're eating travels uh, through the digestive system. And uh, this is basically all I wanna show you today. <laughs> it's uh, pretty, um, pretty nice to observe in any case. Well, a few days ago, I did receive a little bit of a criticism uh, by one of my viewers, a constructive criticism. I have to say, um, and basically it was requested that I show more microbes uh, under the microscope. Um, I've, in the past couple of uh, videos, I've showed mostly static microscope slides explaining a little bit the science of certain uh, tissues and so on. A little bit dry, it might be considered, um, and for this reason has been the request. Can you put some, some living stuff again under the microscope? And I said, cool, yeah, sure. Um, here, let's uh, start off with a few worms here. Um, these worms are not considered microorganisms because they are actually can be seen also with the unaided eye without a microscope. They are a couple of millimeters in length, um, so they're tiny, but if you want to look into the worm itself, into the digestive system, and if you want to see the organs, then of course you do need a microscope, and that's what we're going to be doing today. So um, I collected those uh, worms um, out of one of my uh, glass jars so with pond water that I've standing um, on my windowsill, and in the sediment, uh, there are quite a few of these worms, actually a lot of them. <laughs> they started to reproduce quite happily, and I pulled out a few of them using a pipette and then I um, added a little bit of uh, potato starch. All I did is I scratched the surface um, of the potato and uh, these starch grains then um, are a food source for those little worms. They're just um, small enough to actually be eaten by the worm. Um, however, some of the starch grains were still a little bit uh, too large. After I've done that, the worm really, the worms really gulped them up and after a minute or so even I could see that, that there were already starch grains inside the body of the worm inside of the digestive system and traveling down from the mouth backwards. And uh, some of these starch grains actually were pretty large. I kind of I'm surprised a little bit myself how it was able to gulp up such a large starch grain. Um, and yes, um, this one actually even got stuck a little bit. Um, so I could see that uh, the starch grain was traveling back and forth inside the um, intestine of the worm, um, but really, yeah, did not, not, not travel backwards very much because it got stuck. Right, and it's pretty pretty large. But after a couple of minutes, um, I could actually see that the worm um, did indeed manage uh, to poop it out, and uh, then it was basically um, again released, um, probably to be eaten by the next worm. <laughs> um, however, this kind of also showed that the starch was not easily digestible for the worm. It just stayed in there maybe for, for several minutes. Um, however, um, the, apparently, it was very apparent that the starch grain itself um, was not digested. It did not become smaller. Um, and so it really did not really serve as a, as a, as a good food source uh, for the worm. So what I decided to do then is, is okay, maybe, maybe if they don't like to uh, digest those starch grains, maybe, maybe I should change the food around. And I decided to give them now um, some yeast, some baker's yeast. Uh, I've got some dry yeast. Yeast, um, and I simply added the dry yeast directly to the microscope slide and the water on the microscope slide then started to dissolve the yeast and you can actually see those tiny little dots up uh, breaking off these are the individual yeast cells and uh, yeah they, they loved it the, the, the worms absolutely loved uh, those uh, yeast uh, cells and they really started gulping it up um, and uh, even faster than the potato starch and after even a minute or so I could see that the intestine and the stomach um, and the digestive system of the worm started to fill up with that yeast and it, it was actually even one case where there was one worm trying to eat the yeast and then the second worm came along and, and just stole the food right out of the mouth <laughs> of, of, of the first worm and uh, like we can see over here so this is quite uh, quite interesting here as well um, and I also could see that uh, some of the yeast cells were kind of sticking together quite a bit um, there was almost like a, like during a layer of slime or mucus um, normally the yeast uh, doesn't do that when you put the yeast into water then it will dissolve completely but here some of the yeast cells are still sticking together this kind of uh, shows that apparently the worms are kind of producing um, also some kind of a mucus a mucus that causes the, the things to stick uh, together that's something I did not see uh, before but uh, here we're able to see that see that quite well well um, what I've done next is, is um, 
I've of course taken them the, the worms and I put them back into the jar and uh, um, I allowed them to digest in the food um, quietly back uh, with uh, their little friends in the jar on the window. Um, and um, this basically means also that these worms are probably going to start reproducing now. And what they do is, is they will start to fragment. They will um, actually reproduce asexually, which basically means that one long worm is going to split in two and then you have two worms. Um, and uh, yeah, they do that uh, quite uh, quite a efficiently and quite uh, quite often. I think that's all for today. Hope that you liked the video and um, yeah, if you have any recommendations or any wishes that uh, what you want me to put under the microscope, please do leave comments uh, um, as well. I'll try to, to follow up on that. Wish you all the best. Happy microbe hunting as always. See you around next time. Bye-bye.